Welcome to Sharpening Iron Podcast. This is your host, John Myers. And today we will be talking about how to rightly use lexicons. Now, if you're unaware of what a lexicon is, in the context of this discussion, <clears throat> a lexicon is essentially the production of lexicographers, people who have dug deep into the Greek language and have sought out the meanings, the different possible meanings for specific terms. And so we can talk about agape. Agape is the Greek term for love. And there's different ways in which you can understand that type of term. <clears throat> and so a lexicon is going to tell you a bunch of different ways in which you can understand that word. Okay. And the lexicographers did this by digging deep into the biblical and extra biblical literature to determine the ways in which it has been used. Okay. So that's all a lexicon is. What I believe is misunderstood about lexicons is lexicons are not dictionaries. They're not meant to be, you know, this word means this thing in every case. That's not even what a dictionary does, right? You know, that's not how you're supposed to use a lexicon. However, unfortunately, there are some who do, in fact, use lexicons this way. And so I want to use an example <laughs> that was done on Kevin's channel. So let's take a look at this clip and let's see if we can spot the error. Let's see if we can spot it together. So here is the clip. Let's see what Brother Graham has to say about 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. So there's passages that they like to use. That was actually brought up in the article. They said the natural man. And so what he's doing is he's quoting from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So let's briefly go to 1 Corinthians 2. And let's give our perspective on this and why we think that they're misusing this. Right. So this is an assumption that Calvinists make is that natural man means an unsaved person. But if you study 1 Corinthians 2 carefully, natural man does not mean an unsaved person. And let's start with 1 Corinthians 2.14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of God. Now you can assume, oh, natural man means us before we're unsaved. That's not Paul's point, as we shall prove shortly in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, because he uses natural man to refer to believers. But we'll also go into the Greek. But let's read it in the English first, at least in the King James English. For they are foolishness unto him, by the way, that word literally means moronicness. They are moronic unto him. Neither can he know because they are spiritually discerned. Now, the Calvinist assumes, so therefore they have to be regenerated. They have to have a new spirit to be able to understand. I'm going to disagree with that. Let's go into the Greek for natural man. And the Greek for natural man is sukikos. And it literally means of the soul, the suke. This dictionary agrees with me that it's to be contrasted with the pneuma and also contrasted with the body or the physical, the flesh, right? So it's translated as natural, but I don't think that's a good translation right? because what about the soul is natural as opposed to the body being natural, right? Both of them are natural, in the way that we use natural today. In fact, the um, materialists would claim that the soul isn't even natural. It's just imaginary, right? Only the physical is natural. So this is a really confusing way um, to understand things with the modern usage of the word natural. So I don't, and, and Kevin agrees with me, he's highlighted in orange as well. This is not a good translation for the way that we use English today. Also, I want to point out, so Paul. Okay. 
So before we continue with what Kevin says in this next part of it, I hope you guys caught it. He brought up a word study, which is the product of lexicographers and people who are digging deep into the exegetical literature <clears throat> and said, well, this term, in some cases, means of the soul. There are cases where sukikas means of the soul or with reference to the soul. <clears throat> what the word study doesn't tell you is that that's how 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 should be understood. <laughs> and so the, the point I want to make this video in is Graham has misused consistently word studies and lexicons. He, in this clip, shows that that's one of the meanings. That's one of the ways in which you can use that term. But how does it follow that because it's in the word study, that therefore that's how it should be used in 1 Corinthians 2.14? Did he give us any reason outside of this word study? Did he give us any context, any grammar, any syntax? Nothing. <laughs> We are actually given nothing to support why that should be used here. All that the word study is telling you is that this is a way in which it can be used. But just because it can be used that way doesn't mean it can be used that way in every text that it's used in. There are very clear cases where it can't be used to refer of the soul. And this just so happens to be one of them. Okay, so here is 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. But a natural man, Sukikas, does not accept the depths of the Spirit of God or the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually examined. Now, Graham made a point that's true, so I do want to acknowledge where he gets something right. <laughs> foolishness, you can say moronic. Uh, it's folly, foolishness. It's it's where we get moron from, where that pejorative comes. Moronic. <clears throat> and so, to the natural man, whoever you think Sukikas de Anthropos refers to, uh, whoever that natural man is, to that one, the things of the Spirit of God is foolishness to him. And then he explains it for <laughs> it's foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them. And them refers back to the depths of the Spirit of God. The same thing that the natural man doesn't accept is the same thing he cannot understand. And then it explains why they can't understand. Because they are spiritually examined, or spiritually appraised, spiritually discerned. There's different ways you can even take that, but the primary point is they don't have the spirit. They do not have what allows for spiritual understanding. And then verse 15, you have, but he who is spiritual examines all things, yet he himself is examined by no one. Okay? There you have a distinguishing factor that I believe Graham has missed. You have the natural man in contrast with the man that's spiritual, the spiritual man, the pneuma, and the, the pneuma man, the one who is spiritual. And so here it is, Sukikas is contrasted with the pneuma, but 
they're two different kinds of people. The unspiritual man, you know, natural may not be the best uh, translation. You, Natural is a fine translation, though. It's not like it's wrong. But I would say the best translation is unspiritual man because it's contrasted contextually with the spiritual man who examines all things. The unspiritual man doesn't accept the spiritual things, and he's spiritually examined himself because he does not understand and cannot understand those things. So there you have a categorical distinction of persons. The spiritual man versus the unspiritual man. Now, <clears throat> before we go any further, it's really important to note this text is not distinguishing the old man with the new man. This is categorically distinct persons. A natural man doesn't accept, but the spiritual man examines all things. Okay? It's a distinguishing of persons, not a Christian who still has the flesh and in his flesh does not accept the spirit. Because the language is just, it just is distinguishing different people. And the reason why this is further reinforced in the context is because Paul began this train of thought in the first chapter, in verse 18, where he says, For the word of the cross is Maria to the perishing ones. However, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Okay? This is a beautiful text because it refers to us who are being saved. We, It's the power of God. The, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for us. Whereas to the perishing ones, those who are perishing, it's foolishness. They cannot understand it. There you have distinguishing persons. I'm being saved. It would, you would be voiding this text of meaning if you're to construe this as my flesh is perishing, but my spirit's being saved. <laughs> you know, that's that's not the point. To those who are condemned, to those who are perishing, the gospel is foolish. But to those of us who are actually being saved. The called ones, the gospel is the power of God. That is the beauty of First Corinthians one and two. <laughs> we are called by God, and it is precisely because God has called us that we have no reason to boast. Everything has been done by God and God alone. That's the beauty of it. The text has nothing to do with old man versus new man. The text is distinguishing different persons and expressly says the unspiritual man or the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. That's exactly what he said of those who are perishing in the first chapter. It's foolishness to him. But we wouldn't say that we are being condemned. So it couldn't be referring to Christians. That's the issue. I do believe Graham's misunderstanding of the lexicon has made him think that 1 Corinthians 2 is about Christians. Now, <clears throat> I'm not entirely blaming him for that. A lot of Christians make that mistake with lexicons. And I've made that mistake too in the past. 
but we must accurately understand lexicons. Lexicons are not for the purpose of giving us a univocal myopic definition that's to be used in every case. And so, once again, when he pulls up, well, this can mean of the soul. Therefore, it should mean soul in 1 Corinthians 2.14 isn't actually an argument that follows. Simply showing that it can mean that doesn't prove that it does mean that in 1 Corinthians 2. That Now, whether or not it proves Calvinism is another discussion. But when it comes specifically to how you are to handle lexicons, this is a primary example of how not to handle it. May God be honored and glorified. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Soli Deo.